the most highly anticipated games of the year, and the current generation of consoles, Watch Dogs has amassed a lot of hype and expectations. Initially pushed back from its release date to coincide with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One launches, the general feel of disappointment was almost tangible, as from the first trailer and its first overviews, everyone wanted this game, myself most certainly included. After five years of development from 2009, first shown in 2012 on a budget of $68 million, was the game worth the wait? Well, in my humble opinion, yes. Most certainly, yes. Unfortunately, the PC version had some Uplay server issues at launch, which sent a lot of people into a big Twitter rage, similar to the issues that were faced by Rockstar and the devastating launch of GTA V Online. I had to wait roughly two hours before I got a connection, but it was clear that some people had been waiting five or six hours to crack on in Chicago. As there is no offline mode, DRM flashbacks ahoy, everyone had to button up, strap in, and wait for Ubisoft to fix everything. Once the issues were resolved, however, within five minutes of gameplay, all was forgiven, as you see gorgeous graphics offset with delicate yet striking lighting effects, noticeable even indoors. Even my mighty gaming rig cannot handle Watch Dogs visual prowess, and I'm running it currently at a silky smooth 60 frames per second on the high graphics setting. With a story in mind, it's certainly not as emotionally engaging and as desperate of a story as The Last of Us or The Walking Dead series that I've seen so far. It's certainly possible that the gripping story is biding its time and he's been spread evenly over the campaign like smooth, warm butter rather than a rough, chunky pate. Choices are as relevant in Watch Dogs as they are in all modern story oriented games. Kill police and civilians, steal, be a general asshole, and you become a feared outlaw. Help victims of random crimes, avoid shootouts, and go for the bad guy knockout to be raised aloft as an honoured protector. That being said, as I have not actually completed the story mode, I cannot comment as to how much these actions will actually affect the outcome of the story, or if it only goes as deep as to the reactions that passers by will give you when they see you, and maybe a few extra lines of dialogues with characters. The voice acting is particularly impressive. Although as much as I like the gravelly tones of Noam Jenkins who voices our protagonist Aidan Pierce, and as much as it suits the character and his actions, it doesn't seem to fit his appearance. Aidan looks fairly gentle and caring, albeit for his line of work. It would appeal to me more if his voice turned into a husky Kevin Conroy or Thomas Jane, the more of a dick that you actually become. The few characters that I've met so far, Clara, Jordi, Aiden's sister Nikki, are all very well fleshed out, equally well voiced, animated, mo-capped, and are certainly not included to make the plot more convenient as you progress. The death, or murder, depending on how you look at it, of Aiden's niece, Lena, is the trigger for the story, with Aiden beginning 11 months after Lena's death in his hunt for answers. What is a nice change, however, is how established Aiden's characters and abilities are, Aiden was already a talented hacker and infiltrator. He doesn't suddenly become a vigilante for the sake of revenge. He already was one. The open world of Chicago is excellently presented and easily accessible with multiple shops and interiors to explode both in and out of missions. The more hacking abilities that you unlock as you develop, the more of Chicago you can access and use it against your foes. Everything from bridges, underground piping and car park garages you can manipulate to make escape all the more exciting using your phone. Your wonderful, wonderful phone. If you put aside the crafting, the gunplay, driving and hand-to-hand -hand combat for a minute, I want to fully express how brilliant the phone is. The whole premise for this game is to show exactly how dependent we all are on technology and how easily it could really be to be monitored and analysed by huge, faceless companies. The phone is the shining weapon to turn this controlling technology against the police and the very company's goons who create the CTOS system that is the unknown Big Brother. With a simple tap of a button, you can turn all manner of electronic devices into deadly and distracting weapons to help aid and complete his missions. The sheer ease that you can alter the tide of a fight or in a chase makes you wonder one thing. Why isn't this phone in every single game? It can be used as a tracking device, profiling the general public and stealing from the nasty ones, a hacking device used in some brilliant 3D minigame hacking puzzles that really do take a minute or two to think through, as well as hacking new music, money, crafting materials from people's phones, a scanner of sorts, identifying threats and hazards within the environment 
and a weapon that can jam communications, cause a blackout, and blow stuff up, which we all know is just awesome. And it's finally a spy tool for accessing internal cameras and allowing you to recon the area before you even make a move. There is a standard button push for stealth takedown and a humble but not useless free running system which makes the daring on foot chases through alleyways and between traffic really cool to look at. Hand to hand combat is otherwise not really present which is a shame as a nice combo beatdown would feel really satisfying in this game bringing some of the dirtbags you come across to shiny justice. To offset this however is a great array of easy to find and purchasable weapons, accessible with a good old selection wheel. Although they're not upgradable, there is a focus system which allows you to make easy escapes and pull off tricky headshots in a jiffy. Driving cars makes you really feel the weight of the vehicle and the damage left from a poor turn is almost gut wrenching. If you crash your car, you feel like you've crashed your car. But with the use of your trusty phone it's easy to unlock parked cars and if you've got the right perk, means no alarm. As well as the main mission, there is the standard assortment of collectibles and goodies. One in particular I'm a fan of is locating the big QR codes that are spaced about the city and can only be viewed in full from a certain angle, as they are spread across the sides of multiple buildings. This really shows how much these faceless conglomerates are trying to push technology down your throat as much as possible and it goes almost unnoticed. A nice touch that can pop up at the most inopportune times is the ability to be hacked by other players whether in real life mobile phone app users or players on your respective platform, they can hack into your game and steal money and XP. So you better get to their location first, search every camera, check inside every car before they hack you and get off scot-free and without a bullet in their head. Another personal favourite are the digital trips that you can explore. The best way to describe them is to compare them to Trevor's Rampages in GTA V. All of a sudden you're far removed from what you're doing and you're just in a bizarre situation causing chaos. The best example of this is the spider tank. You're in a tank that's a giant spider and you blow stuff up. Best side quest ever. All in all this is definitely my game of the year and without fear of that title being challenged I look forward to the additional content I get with the PC's deluxe edition and the inevitable clusterfuck of DLC. There's easily enough content to keep you watching dogs for 50 hours plus. Fantastic game, well worth the wait, 9 out of 10.